Hello everyone, my name is Ashley. I am the owner of Horse Chit Chat. I'm a horse behaviorist and equestrian life coach and I thank you all for joining me. So please feel free to tell me where you are around the country, tell me a fun fact about your horse, whatever you feel like, and please do ask questions. Uh, I will answer them at the end if um, they do not get answered during this presentation. Uh, but you all are here because you're thinking about or uh, trying to find a barn to go to or move to with your horse and you want to make sure that it's safe and that you have all the tips and that you know all the red flags to look out for and that's what I am here to help you with. Um, so without further ado, let's go and start. So when you're looking for a barn, I'm sure many of you are looking online, reading reviews and yes, please keep doing that. But also, I want you to ask your horse friends that you trust for any recommendations. Uh, you'll be surprised how many barns people know. It's a small community. We all know each other, no matter where you are. So please make sure to ask your friends for any advice on barns. Now the next big one though, is to make sure you ask your vets, your farriers, your horse dentist, any other professional that works with your horse, because they see so much when they go to all these barns and they're all very professional and when you ask uh, they may not say straight out don't go to the barn because they they're trying to be professional but they will you know kind of give you hints that maybe you shouldn't go there that maybe it's not the greatest place to take your horse um, but i do know some farriers that will straight out say don't go to that barn that barn is crappy so do trust your professionals that you work with that your horse works with and ask them because they will definitely help you and they it will be a huge red flag if they say something like don't go there or that's not the greatest place. So take that as your first red flag and please do ask them for any help in finding a barn. So maybe you found a few barns and you want to go check them out, um, which you definitely need to do. But I recommend to always bring a friend, your partner, another horse friend that you know just someone else to be another set of eyes and ears. Um, Cause sometimes when you're looking for a barn, you know, you have a ton of thoughts rushing through your head and you just want it to work out. But you also need that, you need that second person there to kind of like see anything that you may have missed. Or when the barn owner's talking to you, maybe they'll hear something that, you know, kind of is a little weird to them that maybe you missed entirely. So do take someone with you so that you're, safe and that you hear and see everything that's going on with someone else too. Um, and make sure when you go to that potential barn, um, you are probably going to set up a time to go see that barn with, with the barn owner present, but do try to get there a little bit earlier so you can see how the barn feels without someone, you know, like guiding you or like getting everything perfect for you. Like go see what's happening during the barn when it's just there just everything's happening. And if you can, even the best thing to do is to just drop in, you know, unannounced. I, I know some barns do not like that and you do have to respect that. But if it's a barn that's pretty open and is like, yeah, stop by whenever, definitely take advantage of that. See what's happening at the barn. And, you know, maybe you'll find out you like it and then maybe you'll see stuff like it's a mess. There's wires all over the place. There's unsafe stuff on the ground that, you know, <laughs> just turns you off entirely. And then you decide to just, you know, forget that barn, which is fine because that's what you were supposed to do. You were supposed to check out that barn. The next thing to do is if you're at the barn and you are with the barn owner and they're taking you around, showing you everything, you know, you know, listen to what they're saying, but also make sure you ask a ton of questions. Like ask who is handling the horses usually, like who handles feedings, turnouts, all that stuff. You wanna know, you know, kind of like how old they are, how experienced they are, especially if you have a young horse or you just rescued a horse that, you know, has some behavioral issues. You don't want someone inexperienced handling your horse and causing more issues or someone getting hurt. And always ask, how many times does the barn owner come out and like, you know, maybe do chores or see what's going on in their barn? You know, most, most of the barns I've been at, all the barn owners are always out and about, but there are some where 
they're pretty hands off, you know, they're just running it and they're just seeing, you know, they're just trying to get their money in. They let everyone else do it. So yeah, make sure you <laughs> find out who is actually like running the barn. Also make sure to um, ask if you can bring your own uh, trainer or instructor, especially if you already have one that you love because some barns, they don't allow you to bring in an outside trainer. And this can be a red flag, if, especially if you do want to continue working with the trainer you already have, but also sometimes barns don't want other instructors or trainers to come in because maybe they don't want to see what's going on in their barn. Um, sometimes some other instructors and trainers, they just don't want other people on their turf, and that's fine, you gotta respect it, but you know, it's up to you if you want to take that as a red flag. You might need to think that one over. Um, if you are thinking about going to a barn that doesn't allow you to take in your instructor, uh, definitely watch the instructor that they have there doing lessons and ask the people there what they think of that instructor. Uh, so it's up to you if you want to take that one as a red flag. Uh, it's kind of tricky, but yeah. And the next question that might be you know, a little uncomfortable to ask, um, but you do have to do it very tactfully, is to kind of ask how financially stable the barn is. I don't, <laughs> I can't even, my, I've been at a barn that's shut down because of financial issues and it is so stressful to try to move your horse, find another barn. It's, it's not fun. And I know a few other barns that have shut down because they didn't have good financial stability. So just ask it very tactfully, you know, everyone's, everyone is having, you know, trouble right now with inflation and everything, trying to make their money meet all their needs. You know, just ask very tactfully, how are you guys doing financially? How's the barn doing? Um, just very politely, um, see how they answer and just decide from there um, if this is a safe place to take your horse and that it won't close in just a few months. <laughs> um, so yeah. So then the next big red flag, which is another question you should ask the barn, is whether you can use your own vet, farrier, horse dentist, whatever, all the professionals that you love using with your horse, you need to ask the barn owner if you can use them. Because if they say, no, you cannot use your vet, your farrier, your dentist, whatever, you have to use ours, that is a red flag. There's a reason they don't want you the other ones on the property and you can definitely ask see see why they don't want your vet or farrier on the property but i can tell you from experience with some of our other horse friends that when that happened it was because they just didn't want those people seeing how they were handling their horses and maybe those people said something um to them so always ask you know if you can use your horse professionals um, and if they say no, definitely take that as a red flag and dig deeper and find out why or else just run. Just run from that barn. <laughs> um, another big red flag is if, say, you've, you find a barn you like, you do want to board there, and you tell your vet and farrier that you're probably going to go move to that barn, and your vet or farrier says they will not go there. And this isn't that they won't go there because it's out of their, you know, area uh, where they can, like, get to. This is because they don't want to go there because it is not a safe barn the, or the barn owner is awful to deal with. Um, take that as such a huge red flag if they refuse to go. There's a reason and definitely ask them um, and then, yeah, run again. Run from that barn. <laughs> Lastly, well, almost lastly, if you do find a barn that you like, make sure you take uh, a copy of the lease and really try not to sign the lease right there, right away. You know, take it with you, think it over, really read it over um, and analyze everything. Look for any weird rules or clauses that they might have. Uh, from my experience when I was younger, I had my horse, I was maybe like 16, 17, and there was a weird clause at the barn where I couldn't handle my own horse 
without another adult there. I was almost 18, um, and I went out to the barn one day without an adult because my horse, I wanted to check on her, but also I realized she was lame. So I just wanted to check and see why, and just, you know, I was walking her around, and the barn owner found out and, you know, kind of chewed me out for doing that. Um, and in the end, we found out the only reason they didn't want uh, anyone younger than 18 handling their own horses is because they had crappy barn insurance. And they knew if anything happened, they'd get sued and they'd get, they, they just wouldn't have any protection. Um, so, yeah, make sure you check on that for any weird rules that just like set off alarm and make you question what is going on here. Um, also check to see if they have, uh, like when they're technically open to people and when they close, uh, a lot of barns, you know, They'll say like, you know, by 7, 8 or sundown, whatever, uh, we like the property property to be quiet and just us and our family. And yeah, that's understandable. Respect that. But if it's kind of weird where they're like, it's closed at 6, no one comes or you can't even ride your horse after you're done with work because the barn's technically closed and they don't want anyone on the property. Yeah, that's, that's a red flag. You should be able to access your horse whenever and you should be able to check on them. Um, and if there's an emergency, you should be able to go without a doubt, straight to your horse. So please do read the lease thoroughly. And if for some chance you're at the barn and they're like, we only have one spot left and someone else really wants it, you're there, take the lease and take it into your car and read it. You need to be in a place that you're comfortable, used to, uh, so that you can really think thoroughly about what you're reading what's right in front of you and also it's protected no one can come in the barn owner can't come in and say anything to you no one else can say anything that's you know anyone else in the barn no barn workers it's just you in the car read your lease really think about it and then sign if you think everything's okay sign it and then you can give it back but take your time and now lastly i want you to trust yourself if you feel something is not right or you saw something that kind of like unsettled you or the barn owner or the barn workers just kind of, you know, they didn't seem to be <laughs> right or anything like that, trust your gut. Do not go to that barn. And if you do see something like where you think there's abuse or that the horses aren't being cared well, please do report it. You can report anonymously to um, animal control. And I can tell you, it is so hard for animal control to really shut down those barns that are doing abuse because they need people to come up and say, hey, I saw this. Or they need people with pictures even. So it, it just takes really long time for animal control to shut down a barn that is doing abuse. So if you see something, report it and trust your gut because you and your horse need to be safe no matter what, no matter where you go. Uh, so take care of yourselves. Uh, and if you guys have any other tips or red flags that I didn't mention, please do put it in the comments uh, and support each other. I know this is a tough time. People are moving around. They need barns that are cheaper. And that's fine. Just be careful because some of those barns that are cheap, cheaper, they're not the greatest always. So just take your time looking for one. I know money's tight, but you can do it. You can find a place that's safe and is affordable for you. Uh, and thank you so much for watching. If you have any other questions or comments, please do type them in. Uh, and just thank you so much. And if you ever want to work with me, please do reach out at horsechitchatllc.com. And you can always uh, watch too on YouTube uh, the Horse Chit Chat series. It's cute little cartoon videos that give you lots of information like this, but in a fun way. Thank you again for watching, and I hope you all have a wonderful night, uh, and go get some dinner. Thanks for sticking around. Don't forget to subscribe for more upcoming videos and to support this fun journey into the horse world. Until then, bye.